Hello everyone, my name is Mia Asano and I'm an electric violinist. You may have seen some of my videos on the internet where I play this seven string fretted electric violin. And every time I post a video, people always have a ton of questions about how this instrument actually works. I've made some Q&A videos in the past and I'll definitely make one where I'm talking about the ins and outs of the instrument and how everything uh, works on the technical side of things. But today I'm here to answer the most frequently asked question, which is why does this thing have frets? and do I like using them? So a brief overview of how this instrument works, as you can see, um, the, there's a paddle here, and then there's a strap that goes around the back and clips on right here, and the paddle props up right here, and then it kind of hangs like this on me. It's kind of propped up, so I can still headbang and do all that fun stuff like that. It also has seven strings, so like a regular acoustic violin that has four strings, it has E, A, D, G, then it has C, like a viola, and then F, and B flat. So it actually can go lower than a cello. The reason I got this violin in particular is one, I wanted the extended range. I really love being able to play uh, cello parts and electric guitar parts. And then, like I said, I love playing electric guitar parts and uh, especially covering solos uh, from my favorite bands. So this gives me the extended range to do that. And I can use guitar effects pedals on it uh, to get that tone. So why does it have frets and what is the purpose of the frets? Well, a lot of people think that this is violin on E easy mode and that the frets help me know where to put my fingers um, and that I wouldn't be able to play in tune without the frets. Well, this is a huge common misconception because the frets actually don't help me play in tune at all. Um, I actually find that they kind of get in the way of my perfect intonation a little bit uh, because on the violin, you have basically like a tenth of a millimeter that is the actual perfectly in tune note. Uh, and for my classical training, I would spend hours just training my fingers on exactly where to go on the instrument. Um, I would like literally spend like an hour a day on like one measure of Bach, for example, just to get it perfectly in tune. On this instrument, uh, you can still play in tune, but the frets often are in a fixed position, so they're not moving. Your finger has to move around the fret to get that perfect intonation. So okay, just because it has frets doesn't mean you're in tune, then why have them at all? Well, this isn't contradicting what I just said, but this kind of goes against what I just said a little bit. If I'm playing in a live show and I can't hear myself, uh, which happens a lot. Like one time I was playing a gig and actually uh, my in-ears went out and so I couldn't hear my violin at all. And an acoustic violin normally has resonance um, and you can hear it under your ear. Well, the electric violin, is pretty silent unless it's plugged into something. So if I can't hear myself, um, it's hard to know where to put my fingers because uh, if you're a violinist, you know this, the violin itself is an instrument based on consistently uh, listening and adjusting where your fingers go so that you're perfectly playing in tune. So if you can't hear yourself, you can't perfectly get those notes in tune. Well, that's where the frets come in because yes, maybe I still can't hear that perfect intonation spot, but they get you close enough that you're still playing essentially the right note. So when my in-ears went out, I couldn't hear myself at all. I could feel and see exactly where to put my fingers. Uh, so I knew that I was playing on the right note, even though I couldn't hear myself. And again, this particular song started where I was shifting up and I was playing pretty high. Usually on a violin, like if you're in first position, you can kind of guess where to put your fingers. But this particular song, I was like up here. That is why the frets were super helpful for me in that particular scenario. And yes, it was a rock show and uh, the frets fit the vibe. And uh, it also really helped me to play correctly. Another reason the frets are really helpful is that they provide a visual map of your fingerboard that helps me with improv. Everything is based on patterns with the violin. So on my fretless instruments, I do this as well. Um, you kind of practice like a lick or a pattern um, in one position, and then you can kind of shift your hand around to play that lick in any key. Uh, it's something I've worked on with a lot of professors um, in music school and have like worked on with a lot of violin teachers and it's awesome. And it's something that a lot of guitarists do as well. Well, the fretboard kind of acts as like a visual map so that I can, <laughs> I'm trying to get it to focus on the fretboard. It acts as a visual map so that you can actually see where the patterns kind of lie on the instrument. And it's really helpful uh, when you're fingerboard mapping, when you're improvising, uh, when you're studying the instrument itself. Another really cool thing is with the frets, you can tap on the violin. Uh, this is a technique that I'm still working on, but my awesome friend Liam is a master of this technique. So I'll pop his links in the description so you can go check him out. I've never seen anyone tap on the electric violin the way that he does. It's super awesome. 
So the real question is, do I regret getting frets on my electric violin, yes or no? The answer is complicated. I, I, I don't regret getting the frets on this violin uh, because this specific violin has served me really well. The frets are an awesome conversation piece. They also look really cool. It's super metal. Like this, when I played at Vakken earlier this year, like this violin fit the vibe so well. Uh, and again, the frets have really saved me in some situations where my other gear has failed me. So overall, I'm very grateful for this fretted instrument. However, because of the intonation thing, it's very difficult sometimes. Um, it, it's a little harder than I would like it to be to get that perfect intonation for when I'm recording something. So that's why I actually went and bought a fretless version of this instrument as well. And so now I have both and I can use this one for my live performance and I can use the other one for recording and it's perfect. It fits all my needs and I'm very, very happy. Huge shout out to Wood Violins. Love those guys a lot. They've been very, very good to me and they're the ones that created this instrument. Mark Wood is the one who invented this and he plays this thing effortlessly. So he's kind of the king of uh, this particular violin and also a huge shout out to everyone at the electric violin shop because they've also really supported me uh, and my journey of electric violins. I hope this answered some of your questions about how this instrument works and if you want to get a fretted violin for yourself you can check out a couple of the websites that I'll link in the description and again thank you for watching and subscribe for more electric violin content. Bye!